Let's now extend what we were talking about with vectorization to the idea of producing plots. And this is really important. You will find that a lot of times you want to be able to plot the data which comes from the calculations. So what I've done here is written out the problem statement, which is this. We're going to plot the function f of x uh, is e to the negative x squared over this range from minus 3 to 3. And then I've filled in uh, some pseudocode steps for what I'm going to do. And this is good practice for how to write code. You should be doing your, your programming like this, where you write out uh, as a comment first what it is you're going to do, and only then do you write the code to do it. So to evaluate uh, the x values, well, that's the lin space function, which you have seen before. I'm going to put, say, 200 values, because I want a nice, smooth plot. So I want many points uh, in between to go into generating my plot. To evaluate the function, we know how to do that by vectorization. So e to the negative x. Now be careful, we need the dot operation here because uh, we're vectorizing. And finally, to produce the plot. Now this is something that you won't have seen, probably won't have seen before. We have a plot function. And the basic syntax is an x value and then a y value. So if I now run this code, you see a plot. And so what's happened is that our uh, function evaluated over these values has been plotted here in the window. Now suppose we want our plot to look a little bit different from the one you have here. So what we're going to do to learn how to do that is to look up the help for the plot function. So if I type doc plot in here and press enter then what happens is MATLAB will open up the help file for the plot function which you can see here. And so the syntax which I'm going to introduce to you is this one here. So we have x values and y values and then this thing called a line spec. So line spec is described here. There's a link that you can click on to describe how line spec works. So a line spec is a string which contains some combination of the specifiers which are tabulated in this help file. So the different types of line, dashed lines, dotted lines and so on from these, different markers and different colors. So I'll give you an example of some of that. Suppose I wanted a red dashed line. I could change it to that, run the code, and there you see it, we have a red dashed line. If I wanted to use, say, black pluses as a marker with no line in between, then I can put, put a line spec like that, and you see the result here. Quite often you want to plot uh, two or more functions on the same set of axes. So let's have a look at how that might work. So suppose I want to evaluate some other function. Let's make it uh, x to the power of 4, for example. And this time I'll use a red dashed line in there. Let's have a look at what happens if I run this code. So here's our figure. And you can see that only the second or only the last call to plot is the one uh, that was actually displayed. So the way that we fix that is we put this line here, hold all. And so what that means is keep existing plots on the graph and just add new ones to it rather than completely replacing them. So let's run that and have a look what happens. So notice here now we have our original our first function plotted with the black pluses and then our second function and both of them have been drawn on the same set of axes. So that's really important to, uh, to remember to put the hold all function or the hold all line in your code if you want to plot multiple things uh, on the same set of axes. Sometimes you have a data set which is really only one set of numbers. You don't have a clear x value, y value combination. So to give an example of that, uh, what I'm going to show you is the rand function. Now the rand function is a random number generator. And so what I'm going to say is I want uh, a system of random numbers 100 by 1. So that will give me uh, a vector of 100 elements all between 0 and 1. So you can see them here and I put those into a variable called r. Now, if I just type plot r, then what happens is MATLAB creates its own x values. So it just numbers them from 1 up to 100 and then plots against that. So sometimes that might be OK, but sometimes I might want to supply my own set of x values. So for example, I could put in here as my x 0 to 1, 100, and my r like this. 
And so now what will happen is that my x will run from 0 to 1 instead of previously where it went from 0 to 100. So you'd probably want to present this data with uh, simple markers instead of a line. So let's have a look at putting in, say, stars as our marker type. And so that would be uh, one way that you could plot this data.